y'all i am hope here and crafty hope and welcome <laughs> i am just about to begin working on my day 67 project for the 100 day project for 2024 along with it's my not precious project and that just means i'm taking items from my stash i've been saving up and not using because in my head they were too precious for one reason or another I'm actually trying to use them so and these have been for the most part a lot of assemblage projects but I've thrown in some some different things like this fun snippet roll and um, a couple art journal pages and that kind of thing um, today I dipped into the bucket of things I have of not precious items and this baby was calling to me now this I received in a happy mail from a friend of mine a jewelry friend of mine actually um, and she thought maybe I could do so I think it was a jewelry friend. I'm not positive She thought I could do something with it in any case. I think it is a gorgeous little I'm guessing crochet, but it could be t I don't know y'all. I don't know the needle arts near enough um, If you know if that's crocheted or knitted um, Let me know. Let me know. Um, but this beautiful little I'm assuming a baby doll dress but it's just beautiful. Um, it does have a little bit of a stain here. Um, and it looks like it's the same on both sides. So I don't suppose it matters. These kind of look like wings to me. So I think definitely get a fairy vibe with it. But I also have this, y'all. Which is a, do you recognize it? Do you know what it is? It's a sterno can. Um, and I can't remember if we threw these out in the fire pit or if we found them out. I know, because we built the fire pit. I don't know. These, for some reason, ended up out in our fire pit somehow. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, <laughs> And I um, rescued them and I just love um, like the breaking of it and um, it's just a great rest on it. So I'm going to try to figure out how to use it. I can, I'm seeing like this as a head maybe on the baby doll. Do you see it? Um, so I have those things. I also pulled out this autograph book. It is dated class of 1956. It has somebody's name in it. Only about maybe half of it. Yeah, maybe about half of it has any kind of signatures or writing in it. There's some sections you see here at the front that have like information about the school or whatever. Um, that's definitely from the teacher. Keep up, keep your interest in reading. Um, so anyway, uh, what I thought was weird about this one here are their names, but then C eight two nine seven. I'm assuming those are phone numbers back when before they. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know anything about how they used to do the old phone numbers, but there's a, like this one here it has a bunch of H5069, um, L8819. So I don't know. Maybe those are student numbers. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to use these things. The other thing I pulled out that was not in my precious stash is this box. Um, you see it. I thrifted this. You can see it from the Goodwill for four dollars. Let me see. I may be able to get that tag off without. Ah, I'm gonna have to fuss with it. I don't think it is old. Um, it is very cool. It has the metal corners on it. It has this nice clasp. Um, but it. Let me show you what it looks like on the inside. It's very possibly just something from Hobby Lobby. I don't know. There are no other other than my Goodwill marking. There's no other markings. I don't think it's old. I believe it's like a baby doll train case. Do you see it? Um, you see the little drawer down here. It's got the little hanging thing here. It's got the tie like you would tie your baby doll in. Um, it's cool and I kind of I want to use it but I don't know that I want to keep especially this paper in it. I may pull in some of my Tim Holtz what are they called baseboards or something but I think this could be also really nice to collage in there as well. Some of these old um papers somehow so anyway and then i could have this to do something else with because yeah this would be a nice base for some other journal so we'll see i don't know um i don't think i'll keep the drawer either i think i kind of want to just pull it out and make it a little stash of something and keep the drawer as a box for maybe something else 
I could change my mind though. But because this opens flat, it can definitely hang on a wall. Um, I could definitely secure it somehow um, to be hung. Anyway, I'm thinking on it. For now, I think I want to start altering it, and I haven't decided yet if I'm going to take these ribbons out or not, but I think I will. Um, yeah. Okay, day 67. Let me get started. So this whole process of altering this box into an assemblage took me nine days. So I'm splitting this up into three parts. So you get three days in each of these videos. This is the first of them. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and also admit that I did not take very good photos of this each day, just what I posted on Instagram. So I'm going to give you a look at these at the end of the video like I normally do in most of my videos, but they're from Instagram. So they're odd sized and not great for the format here on YouTube. <laughs> so please forgive me. I hope you get a, a good enough look. I will also you can head over to my Instagram maybe and see them there as well. So they're not in like as weird of a format maybe. Anyway, as you saw, I went ahead and cut those ribbons out. They they did me no good. Uh, they were just going to be in the way. And now I am coming in with some Liquitex Basics white gesso and painting all of that like wallpaper paper in there. Now, this is not going to cover this up completely. I am going to do two coats of it. I don't even know if you'll get to see all two coats. And my head is fretfully sorry apologetically in go in the frame as I'm trying to look into all those nooks and crannies as I paint this so in a minute I am going to and I did leave all of this here for you because I knew I needed a bit of an introduction of this process and yeah so you're you're getting to to see me yeah, cover this and paint it and try to get all of it. As you can see, I'm also, I'm not painting the front edges of that box. And if y'all know what this kind of box is called, is it just a doll box? Is it a doll train case? Uh, what, what would you call it? Are you interested in doll type things? Um, I definitely went with the baby doll theme for this box, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. So once I got like a first base coat down, that little hangy bit up there was bothering me. So I grabbed a screwdriver and I'm just going to take this out. I I, I'm i going to try to work it in later. This is That's going to be towards the end and you'll see it's going to be a bit of a struggle. So um, I am trying to keep those things together. So I've got a little plastic bag that I put them in just in case I'm going to add it later. But um. And now time for more gesso. So I'm going to skip ahead. You're not going to get to see much of this. I am going to paint the top of that. And then I will, um, yeah, paint some more in here. And then I'm going to put it aside. And when I put it aside, I'm going to come in with my little Sterno can. And I've got these, oh, what are they called? They are Tim Holtz paper doll portraits I believe. And I'm looking through them trying to decide what I want to put in there. And I narrow it down to uh, these two girls and this lady um, trying to decide, you know, what, what's going to look best. And I end up deciding on this little girl because she does look more like a baby doll, I guess, than the other ones do. So I realize I'm going to have to cut some of her off to get her into that sterno can. I'm going to start by trimming her down. Um, and then what do I do? I'm going to cut, yeah, those edges there and, yeah, all the way around. Just using the front of that sterno can as a way, oh, actually I use the back of it as a way to measure. So I'm going to think on it, decide to get her in there. I'm going to have to bend her a little bit, but she'll flatten right out. And especially if I'm going to put glue on the back of her, but because she's so that in that way, she's pushed so far to the back of it that it's just dark. So I wanted to lift her up. And if you've seen some of my other assemblage, especially during um, the seat gather crate that I just finished, you saw that one of the ways I like to lift things from the back 
are by using these tumbling tower blocks. So they're the Dollar Tree version of a Jenga game. So I've got a couple of those I'm starting with. I'm going to put some E6000 in the back of my Sterno can as best as I can. I think I'm going to get a cheap paintbrush to help me spread it around a little bit. Um, yep, there. That's the uh, that's the paintbrush that I tend to use for a UV resin so it's I'm not hurting a nice paintbrush that's just a cheap plastic paint paint brush my goodness so I'm getting that in there just I'm, I want to get a nice even coat and it I don't know why I was so obsessed with getting it on the back of it when what I'm really going to do here in just a second is put it right onto the blocks yeah so I'm going to grab my blocks here in just a second and put more E6000. Like most glues, if you put glue on both of the surfaces, you're going to get a better hold. But yeah, it, it's not completely necessary in this case. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just like, get some glue in there. Maybe, maybe I felt like it would secure the back of it so it wouldn't um, pop through since this is kind of a brittle, rusty thing. And I made the decision that the single layer of those tumbling tower blocks wasn't going to be quite enough. So I grabbed another couple of them. And again, I'm going to put that E6000 on them individually. And you can see I'm not lay layering them right. You can see I'm turning this um, in the opposite direction. So the first ones went in, I guess, more horizontally, and the next ones are vertically. Not that it matters. It's just... And that hole that's in there, I'm leaving open there, um, I guess, to have it so a little bit of light can come in or something. I don't know. I do ink the edges of this little girl with uh, Walnut Stain Distress ink and I'm, I'm playing around I decide that to cover up some of the the wood of that because even if I put my little girl's picture in there some of that wood might be seen seen so I grabbed my black gesso and I'm going to paint just the outside edges of all of these blocks I don't want the wood to be showing in them so I'm doing what I can to cover them up with that black gesso so it's more of like just a shadow in the background I'm leaving that center open so that when I glue this glue her down she's making contact with the wood and I'm using Fabri-Tac to do that because it's a nice quick adhesion so Fabri-Tac over the back of her I'm bending her getting her in there and um yeah and once I get her in there and secure I'll press her down real good that's all I'm going to get done for this first day of this project so we'll skip ahead here in just a second to day 68 day 68 I was working on this how cute is that I went and got balloons because I kind of want to do a form in here you know what maybe that's what I was doing I was thinking uh, that I would um start to alter this I don't have much time today it is already very late in the day because it is one of my niece's birthdays and I've been hanging out with her all day so I need to do something quick and dirty and I think maybe I will take this one. Let me go find some wire and I'm going to start to wrap it to make a form of some sort to go under this dress. Yes. It's really funny but um, for as much of a rush as I am, this is probably the most fiddly thing I do in this video. Um, so I went and found some wire that I knew as I am a jewelry artist and so I have lots of wire around it's one of my favorite ways to work with jewelry and so anyway so I have lots of wire and I've grown over the ages and I have wire that I think is yeah I'm not going to use in jewelry so this seemed like a, a great way to use it and not have to just throw it away so as you can see I am taking that wire I've sped this up quite a bit because it is so fiddly and I am 
am just wrapping this wire very haphazardly around this balloon. Um, I'm using the balloon because it gives me a shape within the inside, something that will press out against the wire, but it's something I can remove when I am done. So this is a, a technique I have seen done or I have done with string and uh, starch before as a kid um, to make like Easter egg things. So I thought this would be neat with the wire. As you can see, once I got a shape that I liked, I popped that balloon and um, I have blown up a second one to create a um, another form that will be kind of the upper torso. So this bottom form was more to fill the skirt out. And this top balloon is going to be to fill up the top portion. So I am wrapping my ends here to, to secure them. Kind of, yeah, making sure that I don't have anything that's going to end up poking anybody at any point. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out, y'all. This was, you know, it's all a... A learning process and um, yeah I just knew that I wanted I didn't want that dress to be flat I wanted a form to it so once I was finally able to get that top balloon to to sit in there a little bit um, I am going to start by securing one end of my wire to that base portion pull, trying to get and you can see that balloon is not fully inflated so it has it has some give to it so I can manipulate it a little bit more. So, and I am trying to do what I can to wrap around this and create this upper frame. Um, like I said, super fiddly, definitely just trying to, yeah, just trying to fill out that dress so it doesn't feel uh, like flat. It, it definitely looks a lot better when it's filled out, so. Um, y'all, you, can you see how fiddly this was for me? And it's for somebody that loves wire so much. It's, um, even when I make jewelry, my wire wraps tend to be fairly neat and not sloppy. So this was really hard for me <laughs> to, to make it kind of just sloppy. So, and I'm really glad that this was some wire I wasn't going to use otherwise, because as you can see, I used a lot of it. So, and I'm working at, this time in like smaller pieces to make it a little bit more manageable. And I'm doing what I can not to pop that balloon with my wire. All right, once I get kind of a frame there, um, yeah, I'm gonna test it and look at it. And um, yeah, futz a little bit more. And I included all of this because I wanted y'all to see that, you know, just, yeah. It was fiddly, it was weird, but this is what I did for the entirety of this day. So once I got that top portion with that balloon, um, I am coming back in with more wire to try to start shaping it a little bit more, making this more sturdy. I didn't want it to be something that would end up like sagging somehow. So, and I'm making sure every time I have an end of that wire, I am twisting it and securing it um, with my chain nose pliers so that there's not some kind of pokey end that's going to snag the dress or whoever ends up owning this assemblage when I get done with it. So it is currently, this finished assemblage is for sale up at Hello Gallery in Fairhope. So, um, yeah, and that's part of the reason I don't have yeah more pictures of it right now anyway this once I get this frame kind of finished out we're gonna go ahead and skip ahead to day uh, 69 yes okay we're just about there Is day 69 of the 100 day project and I've got my little head here and I've got my frame to go with my little dress but I really need to work on altering this box let's see can I fit it all in there oh let's see yeah there we go um so I'm starting to see it for some reason as like old wallpaper that maybe I can peel up in some places. I don't know really what's underneath it though. Um, hmm. Does it matter? 
I peel some of it up? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, we'll see what happens. Um, I want to age it in some ways. I'm not sure. I'm toying with ideas. Um, and then take maybe some of the pages from this autograph book somehow and put them in here. Um, yeah. That's the plan for today. So I grabbed my craft knife and started looking for ways to peel up some of that paper. I'm going around the edges, looking at the center, and if I scrape some of it with that knife, that all the better because it, it's going to leave like a scratched in surface that I'll be able to pick up later with some of the uh, some of the bits I'm going to do. So you can see I am trying to peel some of it up with the craft knife and then using my fingers to peel up more. And I don't want to peel up a whole bunch of this a whole lot of sections I definitely want to leave some of that like wallpapery looking stuff in the background because I was having such a hard time peeling it up I decided to go ahead and come in with a sanding block and just sand down some of the edges instead so the parts that I did peel up that's fine it was frustrating um but I'm yeah the sanding block is going to reveal some of that that paper in the background along with some of the like like cardboard that's in the background of this then I'm coming in with some distress oxide sprays in two shades of brown I believe one is probably vintage photo and one is walnut stain I'm pretty sure that's right and this is where I had a lot of fun playing so I'm spraying a little bit of um I, th I thought it was going to be each of them, but I guess I do it one at a time. I've yeah, sprayed one of them in there. I'm going to spritz with my Distress Sprayer, move that ink around, and then I'm going to grab a, um, I can, yeah, grab the other one and spritz. And, yeah, spritz and move it around and then wipe away. So this is a process I'm going to keep going back and forth with. I'm trying to make sure I get in all of those edges and yeah I, I really just want this to feel old and aged and peely and not white so that is just gesso that I have on there in the background as you saw so it gives it an, a little bit of tooth for these inks to kind of stick down into but this is it's going to be a back and forth process of playing with these inks and, you know, putting some in, removing some, putting some in. And yeah, I'm just using a paper towel to push that back, coming back in again with one of the inks, the other ink. And this time I didn't add any water. I'm just spreading it into the cracks and crevices and yeah, making sure I get in everywhere. Now you can see the difference now between the left and the right where the left still has, well, you can't see there. Left still has all that whiteness, not anymore. And the right is plenty aged. So this time you can see I added water and then I've got my paintbrush and the paintbrush really did help me get all of the edges and surfaces of this. And I'm going to just Oh, y'all, that paper towel, I had that stuff all over my hands. So I'm going to, and do I, I'm trying to remember if I even deal with that bottom one. So again, I added water to that one before, and this time I didn't add the water, and I'm wiping. So, and can you see where I sanded? You'll see when I lean it back. And some of the places where I sanded, it stuck a little bit more. So, and again, I sanded a little bit. So you see there at that, I don't know, the middle bottom where it's a little bit darker. That's where some of that ink kind of stuck into the place where I had sanded it. And I absolutely love that. So I'm trying to get into that little bottom crevice there. It was really hard to, to work in there, but it's fine. I, it's fine. Um, gosh, that paper towel is a mess, isn't it? Ah, look at that thing. So I also had the ink all over my fingers. And here with everything being kind of wet, I'm, I'm messing around with some of the, the paper and the sanding and all of that. And because those are distress sprays, I spritzed a little bit of water in there to see if that would like pull anything up. And then I'm going to dry it and um, come back in with that autograph book that I have and some fluid matte medium. So I'm going to just pull out a page 
and or two i i was trying to find pages that had more writing on them that was that was the whole goal of this and not that it's going to look much like wallpaper with these little bits on there but it's going to look like something odd is uh, going on in the background it's going to just feel a little bit more aged so i took that piece and i folded it so it could fit along that corner seam there and I'm going to start collaging in some of these bits. I can't remember why I wanted to look at that. Uh, I don't remember now. It's been it's been months, y'all, since I've done that. So I'm going to, at this point, uh, tear down bits of that uh, autograph book and collage them in. And do this again kind of randomly and sparsely and intermittent. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit and give y'all a chance to watch me do this. And, and then I will pop back in in just a minute and uh, tell you what my last step is going to be for this day. final thing I'm going to do is come back in with more of that distress oxide and age over the top of some of those papers. Now I think you can tell as the papers were going in because those again are the distress products that they kind of blurred over the papers I put in there but I wanted to make sure that there was you know some more aging so I splattered one of those maybe I don't know y'all walnut stain probably um but it could be vintage photo not real sure so I splattered that in I'm making sure I did shake it I blotted some of it up just so you could have those dots kind of in the background and I'm flicking it with it and that paintbrush is far too tiny I don't even know what I was thinking um but just getting some splatters and splots and I don't know that this matters a whole ton when it comes down to it, at least on the right side, because most of the right side is going to be covered up with my baby doll. Um, the left side there is definitely going to be seen a bit more. So I'm just flicking with some water and everything that distress oxide, trying to find a place to put things down. And I ended up, as you saw, going ahead and just dipping my paintbrush in there um, because I wanted to make sure I got some of that ink up on the sides as well as in the back of it so it wasn't so flat I suppose if it's up on the sides that aging goes up all the way around this all right and then I'm going to spritz a little bit water and allow that to dry now the water does add some water spots in there which is great um and I'm gonna leave that to dry and come back in the next day which will be one of my next videos so keep an eye out for that here are some of these pictures that I do have of the process. If you have any questions about this so far, um, don't hesitate to ask. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching, y'all, and I will see you later. Bye.